Hello everyone and welcome. I'm at the Shell Eco Marathon Americas here in Detroit, Michigan. And we're gonna be talking about rolling resistance as it relates to the efficiency of your car. The Shell Eco Marathon is a competition where students around the globe compete to design, build, and test vehicles with the goal of creating a vehicle that goes the furthest distance using as little energy as possible. When it comes to designing for efficiency, there are five major forces which a vehicle needs to overcome. There's the resistive force caused by aerodynamics, as a result of drag and possibly wind, there's the internal friction of the vehicle, such as the engine, transmission, suspension, brakes, and so on. There's the force of gravity when the vehicle is moving uphill. There's the force of inertia, for which the vehicle must accelerate a mass and overcome the energy required to do so. And finally, which we'll be discussing in detail with Michelin in this video, a sponsor of the Shell Eco Marathon, there's the force of rolling resistance as a result of the tire's contact with the road. Rolling resistance is the energy consumed by a tire as it travels over a specific distance. Energy is lost as heat when the tire deforms on the road, creating the contact patch, and then returns to its original state as the tire continues to rotate. How much energy is lost is a result of the tire's hysteresis. Hysteresis is the difference between the amount of energy that is absorbed when a rubber object is stretched or compressed versus how much energy is released when the rubber object returns to its original state. In short, it's the amount of energy lost after a cycle of being stretched. To illustrate the idea of hysteresis, I have a bouncy ball and a kickball. When I drop both of these objects from the same height, you'll notice that the bouncy ball bounces significantly higher than the kickball. This means that it is releasing more energy after being compressed while hitting the ground than the kickball and thus has a low hysteresis. The kickball, however, has a higher hysteresis and doesn't bounce as high because more of the energy that goes into compressing the ball is transformed into heat. The same concept can be applied to tires. If you see, this is an old compound, I would say, and this is a new compound. If I let it drop, you see one is bouncing and not the other. It means that this one lose a lot of energy and mainly thermal energy. If I have a micro camera, thermal camera, or a probe, very accurate probe, you will see that this one is hotter than this one. Okay? That's exactly the same that we have on a tire, a new tire. So a new tire is able to deform without losing too much energy. That's why it's the way we use to, of course, to reduce the rolling resistance. This analogy doesn't take into consideration, however, that a tire's main purpose is grip. Designing a tire is, of course, a compromise between the two. And a low hysteresis tire, for example, a tire similar to the bouncy ball, will tend to be efficient with less grip, while a high hysteresis tire is inefficient but has significantly more grip. Now all of this makes it seem like there's no way to both reduce rolling resistance while increasing or maintaining grip, but fortunately that's not the case. The introduction of silica and tire compounds has completely changed the tire industry. To understand how this is possible, we need to understand the frequency for which the tire is vibrating and the scenarios for which this is beneficial. The majority of rolling resistance occurs as a result of the tire deforming as it comes into contact with the ground. The frequency at which this occurs depends on how fast the tire is rotating, oscillating a specific point on the tire one time per revolution. A tire rotating at 100 km per hour will deform about 15 times per second, a load frequency of 15 Hz. Relatively speaking, this is a low frequency range. This low frequency range is the range that is important for rolling resistance. Grip, however, comes from how the tire behaves as it distorts to the unevenness of the road. The tread needs to react quickly to the changing surface in order to maintain grip, and this is a much higher frequency distortion. Before the introduction of silica into tire compounds, you could typically only choose between a compound with high energy losses and high grip across all frequencies, or low energy losses across all frequencies resulting in less grip. This is where silica plays by different rules. Silica compounds have low energy losses in the low frequency range, meaning low rolling resistance, but high energy losses in the high frequency range, meaning they have high grip. Thanks to silica, we are able to separate the behavior of the compound depending on the speed, I would say the speed of deformation or frequency. Let's have a look on this, for example. You see, it's a very interesting compound because we can explain many things without it. If I, I try to deform it very slowly, you see, I can deform it at the infinity. But I deform it very slowly. Yep. Okay, now if I try to, to do exactly the same at high speed, it breaks. And you see the behavior completely different. And it's exactly the opposite we have on the tire. Because for the tire, from the grip, 
where we have a high speed of the deformation of the road roughness, okay, we are able to deform and to lose energy for the grip. Whereas for rolling resistance, where it's low frequency because it's linked okay, to the rolling of the wheel, of course we lose much less energy. And just to finish with this very interesting compound, you'll see that uh, as I'd explain, when I apply a very slow deformation, it deforms. Whereas when I want to use a very high speed deformation, for example, trying to make it bounce, well, it's bouncing. That's why, thanks to cutting edge technologies, we're able to manage both grip and rolling resistance. Michelin is one of many partners that plays an important role at the Shell Eco Marathon, dedicating a manufacturing plant for two days per year just for making the ultra low rolling resistance tires used by the teams. To give you an idea of just how low the rolling resistance is on these unique tires, it's about one fourth of that measured in kilograms per ton versus a train with steel wheels on a steel rail. Of course, a huge thank you to Shell for sponsoring this video and bringing me out to the Eco Marathon, and congratulations to this year's category winners. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.